Hello. I recently stole a 1980s necklace made of fake pearls with a broken clasp from my mother. Perhaps this has happened to you. If so, and you're looking to create something that is wearable and historically inspired, you have come to the right place. Now, I had never knotted pearls before making this video, and if you're looking for a tutorial that's made by a professional, I will link some in the description. However, I could not find any tutorials that were geared towards making an 18th century pearl necklace, and so that is what I am endeavoring to do now. And so I've documented all of the steps that I went through to turn the broken necklace into this necklace. And I'm very pleased with the result, so please enjoy. This is how the necklace started out, and as I said, the clasp doesn't work anymore, so that's why I've decided to remake it. So I'm just going to be brave and start cutting the pearls apart. Now, you may be wondering why someone who hand quilts their petticoats is suddenly so comfortable using fake pearls in an 18th century necklace. The reason why I'm okay with this is because most pearls that people were wearing in the 18th century were fake as well. Since cultured pearls hadn't been invented yet, real pearls were incredibly expensive and difficult to access. To make pearls more accessible, imitations were made, often out of glass, with an iridescent coating made from fish scales and weighted with wax. Since we have documentation for fake pearls being widely worn in the 18th century, but no source for reproduction fake pearls, this is why I'm willing to recycle my modern fake pearls into a historical necklace. My other materials will include silk bead cord, a beading needle, two silver jump rings, and super glue. So on the silk cord, there's a wire end and a regular end, which is the end I trimmed from. I'm going to line up the ends and find the center of the cord. Now I'm putting one of my rings on, and then I'm going to do my best to close the ring. I learned after doing this that you can use glue to permanently close the ring, but I did not film doing that because I didn't know about it when I filmed this. And here I'm going to tie a knot at the base of the ring. So now I'm finding the edge of the cord without the wire, and I'm going to thread my beading needle. And now here I'm beginning to thread the pearls. The original necklace had 50 pearls, but the most common style of pearl necklace in the 18th century sat at the base of the neck, so I've estimated that I'll only need to use about 40 pearls, so I'm stringing on all 40 of those now. So now you can see I have 40 pearls strung onto the side of the cord without the wire. And now we can remove the beading needle because we're going to be working with the wire end. We take the first pearl and we insert the wire through the pearl and pull the cord all the way through. At this point, we can pull the pearl up against our first knot and we're going to tie two knots going in opposite directions between this pearl and what will be the next pearl. So there's the first knot and then we're going to knot it again in the other direction. So before I went under with the thread and now we're gonna go over. And then we can continue this process for each pearl. So, we have two pearls left before we add our second ring. I'm going to apply some glue to solidify the last knot I've made, and the only reason I'm using a pin to do this is because the tip of my glue applicator has glued itself shut, so needs must. Now I'm going to pull down the second to last pearl all the way, and now I'm going to trim the side of the cord without the wire. Now there's only one remaining pearl which I'm going to thread onto the wire end as well. And then we have the second ring. So as before, I'm going to close the gap in this ring, and as before, I didn't learn you could glue the ring until after filming this section. Now I'm threading the ring onto the cord, and I'm going to tie a knot between the last pearl and the base of the ring. So we have a knot here now, but we still don't have a knot between the last two pearls. So, and this is the difficult part, I'm going to use the wire to go back through the upper pearl. And I'm pulling the cord through the last pearl here, and now that we're here, I'm going to tie my two knots going in two different directions.
Now I'm going to seal these knots with some glue as well. And now that the glue has had a chance to set, I'm going to trim the end of that thread. So this is the result. To fasten the necklace, I have a piece of silk ribbon which will be threaded through each ring and tied. Now some necklaces from the period do seem to have ribbons that were directly attached to the beads, but I've gone with the rings method because it provides a bit more adjustability in sizing and the ribbons can be easily changed out for washing. Thank you for watching. I hope that everything I did makes sense, but if it doesn't, you can always ask a question in the comments. Please like and subscribe so you don't miss my upcoming Tête de Mouton hairstyle tutorial video because I was looking for tutorials of how to do it and I ended up having to figure it out all by myself. But now that I have, I must share the good word because the Tête de Mouton reigned supreme for some 20 years. So it's very iconic and that will be out fairly soon. So you should look forward to that and you should subscribe so you don't miss it. Bye!